please make the heading. And uh, before we get stuck into literally the nuts and bolts of these um, trigonometric expansions, whatever that means, you need to know why you're doing this. You've got to have a, a, a purpose because otherwise you're just shuffling around symbols and it's like, what, what's this even for? Okay, so I'm going to give you two reasons. The first reason, just overall, is calculus. Now, I need to explain that because that's very broad. <laughs> it's like, why is that? Because calculus. So let me try and unpack this for you. Let's think, and this is not a rhetorical question, I actually want you to help me out with this. Let's think, what kinds of things do we know how to do with calculus at the moment? Because we've been in this for a while now, you can do heaps of stuff. Go, go right back to the start, right back to the start. What was the very first thing you learned to do? Differentiate, Differentiate right? And you said, okay, well this is all about the gradient function. Yeah, so we, we unpacked that, we looked at the geometry of the curve, stationary points, uh, points of inflection, etc. right? So you learn to differentiate. What kinds of functions did we start off learning to integrate? Uh, sorry, differentiate. We'll get to integration in a minute. What kinds of functions? Linear. Uh, we looked at linear functions. We looked at quadratics. We looked at Q anything basically where it's a polynomial, yeah? So we looked at polynomial functions because they were nice and neat. And the rule for differentiating them is really easy to learn, OK? Um, also, it sort of fit with first principles. You remember we introduced first principles, um, limits and all that kind of thing. So we learned how to deal with these. And then we also learned what happens when you combine them. So for example, if you've got a polynomial divided by another polynomial, um, and you're like, I, I don't know what to do with this. How do you, yeah, we, we developed rules for this, right? So that was the quotient rule that we were just referring to there. But that wasn't the only rule. What other ones? Chain rule. Uh, the chain rule, very good. And if instead of dividing, you multiplied functions, what would you do? You use the product rule, right? So, so this is all under the heading of differentiation, really. Then we learned how to undo differentiation. What's that called? Integration. We already said it a couple times today by accident. We learned how to do integration. And then after we sort of covered that, we were like, well, we know how to do lots of things now. We're kind of running out of space in, in polynomial land. So we learned how to deal with a whole different family of functions, right? Do you remember what was earlier this term? What do we introduce? Logs and exponentials. So I'm putting that up here because you learn how to do all of these other things, differentiation, qu quotient chain product, and integration. You learn how to do them with logs and exponentials as well. Okay? So what we're coming to now is, well, well, now where do we go? Where do we take this, this knowledge or where do we take these skills? And there's really only one kind of family of functions left that we haven't touched yet. And you've been working with them for years, so it's kind of weird that we've waited this long. What's missing? And the answer is trigonometry, right? We haven't looked at sine or cos or tan in this context at all. We're still thinking about it with triangles and with graphs that you've been doing very recently, okay? But we don't know how to do any calculus with them yet, which kind of leads to the next thing. How did we, um, I haven't written it here, but how did we first deal with these polynomials and develop the laws? We looked at first principles, right? Now, underneath this little spot here, I'm actually going to have to need a new arrow. Underneath first principles, let's just write down, what is first principles? What's the actual, there's a formula for it, right? If you've got a function f, then the derivative of that function equals a weird limit thing. What was the limit? The limit of as h approaches 0, very good. And then there was a fraction. What was the fraction? F of x plus h. Yep, f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. There we go. Now, if you're struggling to um, remember that, it, it has been a little while, so that's OK. But just remember, all it is is rise over run rise over run, yeah? And we're, we're thinking about what happens when the run gets really, really tiny, because we're not interested in secants, we're interested in tangents, as if the run was like, well, as if the run was nothing, okay? So if this is what first principles looks like, what would happen if we applied this idea to trigonometry? Um, out of all the trigonometric, trigonometric functions you know, which is the most basic one? It's sine, right? So if I said the derivative of sine, well, if I tried to tackle that with just this first principles tool, right, I would say the limit as h approaches 0 of what? Well, yeah, the, the function I'm interested in differentiating is sine. So instead of writing f of 
x plus h, I will write sine of x plus h. You with me? That's just the particular f that I'm looking at. Uh, minus, what's on the end here? Just sine x. And then you're dividing by h because you're always dividing by h. Okay. Now, at this moment, you can see, aha, now we've, we've sort of crossed into an area where we don't, we don't have the knowledge to deal with this object. Because this guy here, you're like, well, I don't know what that is. Now, it's very tempting to think that that might be equal to this. It's super tempting, and students make this error all the time. Okay? Now, it's tempting to think that because like, expanding brackets sometimes does that. But you have at least two significant pieces of knowledge that tell you this cannot be this. Have a think. Um, trigonometric expansions are not the only kinds of expansions you've dealt with in this course. I want you to think all the way back to term one last year. What kinds of expansions did you deal with? There was a whole topic about it. Think, think, think back. Think it was very close to algebra. It was an extension one topic and we chucked it into your AP1s. It was the expansions, not of trig, but of, you know, <coughs> Binomials, for instance. Yeah, do you remember this? Okay. Now, we spent a whole topic on this and introduced sigma notation and all, Pascal's triangle and all that just to show that this is not as simple as just saying this. Right? In fact, that's not true for any value of whatever that thing up in the, whatever that power is, right? So, number one piece of information that makes us suspicious that when you're expanding these brackets, it doesn't just turn into something neat and simple like that. But there's one other reason you can, um, a really obvious like year 10, almost year 9 reason why you can know that this is not true. Sine 90 degrees, don't say it out, but you know what this is equal to, right? You know that value, in fact it's one of the first ones that you learn, okay? Well, let me think about breaking that 90 degrees into two pieces. What if I were to break it into two pieces? For instance, I could say break it into sine 30, and sine 60, right? 30 plus 60 is 90, yeah? But what are these things equal to? What is sine 90? You can tell me now, it's one. one. What's sine 30? It's a, half. it's a half. But sine 60, it doesn't work, does it? Because what is sine 60? It's root, root three on two. So when you add these together, you clearly do not get this, right? Even though 30 and 60 do add to 90. Okay, so sine x plus h is not just going to equal to these things independently. So we have to work out what to do with these things. Okay, so when we master this skill, when we do work out what this is equal to, you will find it's useful for all kinds of things, not just calculus. But the reason we're meeting it now is because you need it for calculus. That's where we're up to. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to take you on a journey. We're going to work out what this is. 